Hello everyone and welcome to another IT training video. In this video, I'll be talking about the basic HTML tags, their uses, and their purposes. But first, let's do a quick review on HTML syntax. So HTML is a tagging language, and so as I've said in previous videos, we tag things all the time. Like in English, we tag what is being said with quotation marks, and there's an opening quotation mark, and there's a closing quotation mark, and everything in between is what was said. So this is exactly how it works in HTML. <clears throat> so here is the content that we want to tag, and before it we put a starting tag, and after it we put a closing tag. And notice the difference between the starting tag and the closing tag. The closing tag will have a forward slash right here. And anything in between it will be affected by it. So this is a bold tag, so it'll make it bold like that. Now, notice that this is just for effect. The code itself doesn't become bold. It's the outcome of the the, the content that will become bold. So just to kind of, if you're a little confused about that. But in the real web page, this content would be bold. In the code, it doesn't become bold. <clears throat> All right. So, let's start with some common tags. The first tag we have to talk about is the HTML tag. And the HTML tag is important. This is what it looks like in HTML, forward slash, HTML to close it. Now, the reason why we have it is because this HTML defines the whole HTML document. And this is important because there are lots of different types of code out there. There's HTML, there's PHP, there's CSS, there's JavaScript, there's might be even some <clears throat> some action script, uh, HTML5, CSS3, there's lots and lots and lots of different types of code. And so we have to establish for the computer that this code right here is my web page and it is written in HTML. So the, everything that we put on our web page will be in between the, the opening and the closing t HTML tag. And all web, web pages have this tag. If you open up a Dreamweaver the, for the first time, the page that the default page that it makes for you, the blank page, will have the HTML tag already made for you. So this is you can see it here, the, the opening, and right here is the closing. <clears throat> all right. Within the HTML tag, there are two big tags, and the first one is called the head tag, the second one is the body tag, we'll talk about the body tag a little bit later, but we're going to talk about the head tag first. And the difference between the head and the body is that the head tag will have information that you do not directly see on your web page. So things like your <clears throat> web page title that shows up in the web browser bar, um, metadata that you have, any links to style sheets or or other like information like uh, if you have JavaScript that you're linking to, um, CSS if you have a style in there. So we're going to talk about the th um, three common tags in the head tag, uh, which are title, link, and style. So here's an example of the head tag here, and this is where it is and the default code that that Dreamweaver gives you right here. So you can see that inside of this head tag gives you a title and there's some metadata there. All right, so common tags. So let's talk about the title tag first. So <clears throat> title tag um, defines the title of the document that is and is previewed in your browser page tab. So we can see in the title we have content, welcome to IT training. And then in the uh, title of the web page, this is in Google Chrome, it says welcome to IT training. So that's exactly what the title tag does. All right, the next one is link. And what link does is it links your HTML document to other documents. So in this case, I think we have ours linking to a style sheet. So right here. Um, you can also link to uh, JavaScript files. You can link to um, other style sheets. There's, there's things that you can link to. But these links aren't like hyperlinks. These links are just more information that you just don't want to write in your web page, especially if you have to do it over and over again for multiple web pages. <clears throat> All right, the last one in the head tag is the style tag. And the style tag is used to define style information in HTML document. If you went over our, in, our overview of HTML and CSS, this is the tag where you put all of your CSS in if you don't have it in a separate style sheet linked. So you can see right here we have our opening style, closing style, in between is all CSS. Pretty cool. <clears throat> all 
All right, so that was the first big tag, which was the head tag, and there's a lot more tags I can put in there, as, in, as I said, like metadata and things like that. The next big tag is the body tag, and the body tag contains all of the information, the content of your web page. Right? It can include tags like text, hyperlinks, images, tables, and lists. Lots of different things. So the first tag we're going to talk about that goes inside of the body tag is called a div tag. And div stands for division. It divides up your web page. And this is mostly f so that you can easily access individual parts of your web page using CSS. So that's an example of a div tag right there. And so these are some examples of some div tags in a web page. So right here, this opening banner, that is a div, um, the search bar. And then we can group divs together inside of another div. So this entire banner, top part is a div. The navigation is a div. This image is a div. Um, the text next to it is a div. The whole thing. And you can kind of see how the, uh, the web page is laid out blocks by blocks by chunks. That is so that we can we can grab specific parts of this web page and just change that part. So we can see this middle part is gray. We can say, okay, everything inside of this middle div tag, I want to have a background gray. Or anything in this top div tag, I want to have a background blue. Does that make sense? All right, so here's some other common tags. P, H1, H2, H3. P is a paragraph tag. It defines a paragraph. So we can see in this is what it looks like in code. So everything in between this is one paragraph. And on the web page, this is what it might look like. So here is an entire paragraph. It automatically creates space before and after it by default. And you can change that too with CSS, but that's so you can figure out what paragraphs are what paragraphs. All right, par heading tags. So heading tags are H1, H2, H3, and they create headings. So this is what they look like in the code h1, h2, h3, h4 and this is what they would look like in the web page so you can see how with each heading it gets smaller so if you're writing a long paper you know that your chapter heading is bigger and then your section within your chapter is just a little bit smaller that's exactly what these h1, h2 tags are they're just like chapter headings or section headings and you again you can change these styles in CSS, which we'll talk about later, um, but it's good to organize your web page using these headings so that you can style it differently. <clears throat> All right, unordered lists. So unordered list tag, um, you have to use create an unordered list like this. But inside of it, you also need list items. So this is kind of a new thing. So you create a list, and then every item in the list has a list item. So right here, li is a list item. And these list items are placed inside of the unordered list tag. So any list item outside of the unordered list tag is not going to be part of the list. So you have to put them inside. And this is what it looks like afterwards, down here at the bottom. All right, so sometimes you can use lists to create navigation. So this right here is actually a list that we have used CSS with. And we instead of it making a vertical list, we've made it a horizontal list. And using CSS, we got rid of the bullet point. So this is kind of cool. And so uh, this is one way to create a text navigation. There is You can also do it with paragraphs as well. So why do we teach all of our students HTML if you're using Dreamweaver, because Dreamweaver is a WYSIWYG. It's a what you see is what you get. Well, here's some of the reasons. Dreamweaver is a tool for technology, and you should learn the technology before the tool. That's really important. If you don't, if you know nothing about web, de web design or websites or how the internet works even, like how could you even possibly like think of or create a website? Learning Dreamweaver is less complicated with an understanding of HTML, which is really true. You'll find that in Dreamweaver there's lots of menus and there's a lot of jargon that you will not understand unless you kind of understand HTML and CSS. Um, sometimes you find code or examples online that you want to add to your website. And 
<clears throat> this is kind of like, you know, coders, they do this all the time. They're lazy. They don't know how to do something. They'll, they'll borrow code from other coders. And if you don't know how that code works, then it'll be very difficult for you to kind of borrow code um, from other coders into your own website. And you can tweak your code, or if you need to fix something, you'll understand how to fix it and where the tags start and begin. Actually, this is the biggest reason why we, we teach our students. Before, we didn't teach our students HTML and CSS, and when they had a problem, they didn't know how to debug their code. And since we won't be there by your side whenever you're creating your web page, it's really important that you know how to debug your code yourself. Um, it's a common to hit a problem. You don't, I think I just talked about that. All right, here's some other extra resources for you if you're trying to learn HTML. This is just a brief overview. But if you go to www.w3schools.com, that's like the best resource you can go to for learning HTML. They have um, example codes. They have explanations of all the tags and all of the attributes for each tag. It's a really great place for you to go learn and also practice. They have like little practice things. Also, train.byu.edu. We'll be trying to post up more videos about Dreamweaver and also about HTML and CSS on our web page. Um, if you don't like to go to our web page, you can also follow us on YouTube. Uh, I think our username is BYU Training. All right, and I think that's it. So go out there, go get to a website, look for. Uh, Look for gas. I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, but uh, go to the website and look for tags. I think that's what it meant. And just practice identifying tags and see how the, uh, the code relates to the website. All right. Hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you in one of our classes. Bye-bye.